Hello, hello! This is Raquel with Paints and Glitter. I'm going to be setting up here to see if anyone wants to join me in a live video. And I probably should have my cell phone. <laughs> so don't mind me if you're watching on replay. I'm just waiting for some people to join me in this live stream. I'm going to be making as the description of the video states, a shadow box. And I'm just looking for my video here. Oopsie, let's see here. So bear with me. I'm gonna be getting everything ready little by little. And this of course is an impromptu video, but I figured I should come along and share the process. So I'm still on my lonesome here. I'm going to keep prepping and hopefully someone will come in and join in. I'm going to turn my volume up. So I have here a few things and I'm going to keep gathering them. And let me see here. Hopefully you guys can see anyone joins me you can let me know if you can see that well or not but I'm going to start cutting paper since there's no one here and I'm going to set aside my stamp but I am using Anita Jerem stamps today and also using my paper collection that I do have on my Etsy store and if you're new here I welcome you to my channel I am very inspired by these stamps that I picked up from Colorado Craft Company. And this morning I was coloring in another one. It tells me there's someone here. So if there is someone here with me, please feel free to say hello. And I'll say hello back to you. As I always say, I don't like to ignore anyone. So I'm just cutting out some strips that are going to be on the outside of my shadow box here and these are just about three eighths of an inch wide and if they're not exact I'm not going to worry about it too much because I can always um, cut them down or even distress the edges but let's see here I need one two six of these that's two and hopefully everyone's doing okay as I said before if anyone watches this on a re recap or replay I'm making a shadow box and hoping to have some friends join in so that we can just catch up on some chat and this is an excellent gift for either a baby or anyone who's on lockdown, anything like that that you want to send in the mail. Okay, we've got four strips so far and I'm just going to keep cutting here because it just looks like it's me, me and me. So... This paper is the, uh, the paper that I designed and used in previous projects. And I was excited to use it again. It's very subtle, but I think it's gonna be perfect for this project. And you will see why once I get working on this. If you're watching this on replay, go ahead and uh, fast forward through all of this cutting. For now, I'm just going to keep doing this. And I'll try to leave a timestamp also as to um, what time, you know, you can skip to. Or I'll even try to edit the video if I'm able to. If not, then it just means that I was uh, out of time. <laughs> okay. Keep cutting here, cutting, 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 
And I'm almost done with this. Okay. It looks like I had two people. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's see. One, two, three. Okay. I think I need one more. I'll figure it out as I go along. But in any case, I have some strips of paper here. And I'm going to set this aside. Hello, hello. If there's someone there, please say hello. This is the paper that I'm going to be working with today. And hopefully you can see the detail. I'm not sure if my camera will zoom in on that. But it is a really delicate paper. And I'm also going to be working with this base here. I hate to get ahead of myself, but I did not announce this video, so I would like to have some people here as I craft. Because if I skip over anything, then I'll just end up having to repeat myself. But I do have some snowflakes here, and these are just cut out of some papers that I have, including Tonic Studios cardstock, which is the silver. I'm going to take those little centers out. And also... Um, this blue paper from DCWV. So I've got those. And then I have an image from Colorado Craft Company. That is this one here. Let's see if I can find it. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like. And I see there's four people here. Please say hello. Six people. Yay, people are coming in. I'm not seeing anyone chatting. So if you could say hello, I would appreciate it. I'm working with this uh, image here, and this is called, um, what is this called? Uh, Better Together from Colorado Craft Company, and I've colored it in using alcohol markers, and then I went a little bit further, but here's the image. It's absolutely darling. I love how it came out. And then I printed out one of my papers. That's this paper here. And I did print it out in a smaller scale, and that's what the beauty of digital papers. So I'm going to be using that as the background of this shadow box. I've also cut out some pieces using my designer series collection of dies from Tonic Studios that cut out edges. I've used 110 pound cardstock for these. And I've also gone ahead and drawn some accessories for these little guys that are going to be going inside of this box. But I do want to begin here. And if you are familiar with who Anna Rodriguez is, we just did a swap and she sent me a gift box. In fact, here it is right here. This was the gift box that she sent me. And I thought it was absolutely gorgeous because it has a little, it's actually a card and, but it's dimensional, so it's got the little gifts inside. And I got to thinking, it's been a while since I've done a shadow box, and this inspired me to make one. And I do see there are more people in the chat. Please say hello. I'd love to know who's here. So this is the shadow box that I made. I was totally inspired and decided to make one. Now, this is a different stamp, which, yes, I've used for a couple of projects already. But I thought it would be beautiful to place it inside inside of this little shadow box that I made into a frame. And it's got the little stand there and everything. So I use my Tonic Studios products. I use my uh, Nouveau pens, Pro Markers, the whole nine yards there to go ahead and make this. And I decided that today I would make a different one. So here's the base, and it is made the exact same way that Anna made the base for hers. So she does have a tutorial on this. If you're interested, you can follow that tutorial, or if you have any questions, then I can definitely answer them for you. I just would hate to repeat what's already been done uh, when she gave such wonderful instructions. The, un the, other, the only thing, I'm sorry, that I did omit was the cover. So I'm just going to start adhering this. But first, I'm going to apply the strips to the sides because it makes it a lot easier to do it before adhering the shadow box together. So this is a little bit of fussy work, but it'll be worth doing it like so. 
So basically you just start adding your strips of paper here and I'm just going to apply adhesive here on the edges like this and this is the uh, Barely Arts glue. Just like that. And I'll just cut off the excess. I'm not gonna think too much about this because these edges are going to be covered anyway. So I'll do that, apply the next strip. Like so. We've got one side there. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Cutting away the excess here, but being careful not to cut the base. And you could definitely ink around these strips of paper if you wanted to. Give it a different look, more distressed. Or if you want to go for clean and simple, you can leave it as it is. One more strip on this side, just like that. And then with these papers, because there's pink and blue in the paper, you can choose either color to do the distressing. Either one's gonna look just fine. Now that I've got those signs, I'm just going to start assembling, um, or actually, I'm sorry, you know, I'm going to start doing the strips at the bottom here because that'll make it easier to do it now also. I'm going to do it in the same fashion here. One here. one here and actually that one's too short so I'll go with the next one and this is kind of a cheater method if you will to do this however you could do it after you assemble the sides as well so this is just a matter of personal preference I'm going to do it like this and then follow the edge here and the next one. Just like that. I'll save this for the other side and then come down here and do the next one. here. Nice and clean finish there and I'm just going to flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Thank 
here. I need to cut it down a tiny bit more. Hello. Please feel free to say hello if you hop on. I do see that there are people coming in and out, so I am able to see when someone's watching. I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon. I am just crafting, and as I like to do, I like to share what I make. And today I'm making a shadow box. If you have any questions, feel free to chime in. Hi, Wandy. Can't stay long? Oh, I appreciate it, Wandy. No worries. So long as you say hello, I'm not offended. <laughs> I just wonder why people stay quietly and then, you know, don't say anything at all. I think it's a hilarious. I am making, let me show you what I'm making. I'm making one of these. I showed it on Instagram and I'm doing a different one. So... This one was with this little stamp where they're all uh, gathered around the little Christmas tree. And thank you, sweetie. Oh, you're working. Yes, you're, you're the working kind. <laughs> I'm just home alone crafting. Uh, I'm using this stamp, however. So I colored it in. And then I took some creative license and made some accessories for these guys. So I'm going to be popping those on top. And oh. Yeah, I hear you, girl. I've I've been in your shoes, so I un completely understand. I um I have to take it easy. So even if I were working, I would have to be working very few hours. Um, but you know how it is when you're working from home or working outside of your home or just taking care of your home is enough. Um, so I'm using my designer paper that I've created, just to let you know, it's available on Etsy, because I have to give myself a nice plug. You got, oh, hi, Robin. So, oh, thank you. Um, thank you for joining us. So if you stick around, Robin, I'm going, I'm going to go through the entire process. You got the candle, oh, the big one. Uh, Wandy, I, well, it has to be the big one because the small one, uh, they stopped making. That's awesome. Isn't it easy to put together? So just to show you what I did was I cut the paper into strips and I added it to the edges and now I'm just going to start assembling it. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Now I did print my paper here in this smaller scale. It's got the little snowflakes on it. Yeah, the little one is cute too, but you know what? I think the bigger one is probably going to be easier because the little one was kind of fiddly to work with. Um, so yeah, I think you made the right decision in waiting. I wish I had. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm glad that I got the small one because it is cute. So I'm trying to think. I'm just going to go ahead and use wet adhesive here. And I'm going to apply this. This is going to be the background of my little shadow box so I'm gonna go ahead and put this here now the way that I designed this paper it already has the distressing on the edges so you don't even need to apply ink it's gonna look like you already did so you see how the edges have that blue around it so you can use it like that now here comes the assembly part of this box the um, you have here, let me show you. So you have one, two, three, and four uh, strips here. The, the outermost one is the one that gets the adhesive. Now again, um, um, Anna Rodriguez already did this adhesive on my fingernail. Anna Rodriguez already did the uh, tutorial on this, but I figured I, I would go live and just make one since I was making one anyway. Thank you, Robin. And then here's how this works. You want to put this edge, and let me zoom in actually. You want to put that edge so that it meets the crease line there. And then fold it over. And as you can tell, I did the same thing that Anna did, which was to add the liquid adhesive to the dry, just to give yourself some wiggle room um, as you place this down. Okay, and it's gonna form like a little tube. And I'm so sorry about that light. Let me move it. Sorry, guys. 
Didn't mean to blind you if I did. And now here's what I did. I took, if I can find my pencil, <laughs> I just had it. Well, anyway, you can grab a pen or a pencil and I put it inside of there because it's almost like creating a straw, a paper straw. And I just pressed it with that, pressed down on it just to help it, if you will, help it to stick because you can't really fit a bone folder in there and you don't want to flip it over and push on it because then you're going to squish your box. So there's that. Can you, or is the lighting okay for you guys? Can you see me okay? Because I can't see, so. It just dawned on me that I should probably wear my glasses. All right. Oh, wonderful, thank you. All right, so let's repeat the same thing on the other end. So you're just gonna flip it over and repeat it and I promise you this is the more tedious part of this but once it's done then you can start having your fun uh, filling in the scenery if you will and I already did the alcohol coloring because I didn't want to uh, to do that on, an, on a video since I, I am so very meticulous with my coloring that that would be like a three hour long video but in any case I find it um, more comfortable to hold the paper like this and then roll it forward and you could do this with different colors of course it doesn't have to be so monochromatic but because of, I wanted to build something delicate as usual I like things that look very delicate and that's why I went with this. And let's face it, I wanted to uh, use my papers <laughs> because I thought, okay, they're perfect for this time of year and why, uh, why make something and then just have it sit there? I want to get some use out of this paper. Okay, so I'm pressing down. So you see how this starts? Let me zoom out a bit. So it's coming along on both sides and I liked placing the strips first because then now I don't have to worry about reaching in there to uh, decorate the inside edges but you want to make sure that you don't have a wonky finish and that's why you have to kind of hold down on it because if not you're going to get um, it'll splay out you know now Inevitably, you have to do the other two sides. So let's go with the top here. Wandy, I've seen your uh, beautiful chocolate bombs. I was trying to convince my son to make some with me uh, for his friends. But you know, I think boys, they just rather have mom do everything. <laughs> So I haven't been able to get him to stick around long enough, but I, I thought that was a wonderful, wonderful, uh, you know, like quick gift to give someone or just fun. I thought that was adorable. All right, so if you see what I did there, I rolled it in and did the same, only I had to place adhesive here on the corners because this is going to be uh, what's gonna look like my mitered edge here, that 45 degree angle, okay? Yeah, they look like they're awesome. And I like to bake during Christmas time. Um, I used to make cookies and all of that stuff. And this year, um, I've kind of refrained from it because I stopped, um, well, I stopped eating sugar altogether. <laughs> so I figured, well, I'm not gonna have sugar in my home and all this stuff. But for other people, I don't mind making that sort of thing because I've done it before where I've, you know, done hundreds of cookies and not eaten a single one so it's not necessarily a temptation for me but I just had stopped eating or I mean stopped buying sugar I should say okay there we go so thank you sweetie no worries god bless you and thank you for stopping by and for saying hello I, you know I appreciate it hon we'll catch you later so now I'm going to do the same thing on this end. 
apply the adhesive and I know this this is you know not the fun part to watch but I promise you we'll get there let's roll it in again it takes a little bit of patience but it's worthwhile in my opinion because you get the end result is so adorable and of course you could seal this oh and another pointer I want to give is see the grid lines on my mat here I'm making sure that this is a 90 degree angle before I press that down because I don't want this to be crooked. So that's another thing that I'm keeping an eye on here as I press this down is that I'm not reinforcing the uh, sliding in one, uh, you know, in one direction or another. I'm making sure that I'm just pressing down. And because this adhesive is pretty strong, it helps out quite a bit. I don't recommend really watery adhesive because it might give you a, a bit of a headache to make this. And let's just face it, if you, if you goof around with it or it doesn't work out too well, just go around it with a ribbon and it'll be less noticeable. Like in, in the event that you make one and it isn't 100% straight, just hide it with ribbon <laughs> those are my two cents there for that thank you robin it's not my original idea you know it's it's a box a lot of people have made these boxes but i'm so glad that um that anna sent me one because it got me inspired to go ahead and make one i had made one a couple of years ago with the door on it just like the one she sent me only it was really big and I remember I made it for a swap for Jolie Fernand, who's Jolie Lovely Scraps here, I think now is the name of her channel. And what I had done for that one is that I placed a card, a really dimensional card inside. And then I used, um, I used the box just to house that card. But now I have these stamps and I've been wanting to use them. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. I love... The illustrators work because she made uh, children's books and they were when I would read to my kids some of my favorite books to read to them. So when I saw her images and here's the one that I'll be working with today, I just had to have these. I thought they were so gorgeous. So these are the little guys that are going to go in here. Now what I'm thinking is too, and I'm letting that dry, but it's, you know, and patience is not one of my strong suits. Um, okay, so let's put some foam adhesive on this because I do want to pop it up. And I get bits and pieces of this here and there. But I'm going to go ahead and just put one layer of foam adhesive back here. And as you can tell, I used alcohol markers to color this. That's why you can see it through the paper. And then I did use some um, colored pencils also to enhance it just a little bit more. And as I mentioned before, I also took some creative liberty to make some accessories, which I'm going to be adding. Yeah, I know. Patience is, is hard to come by. <laughs> I think they need to bottle that stuff up and sell it. Actually, it would, you know, I don't think anyone would buy it either. <laughs> That's the sad reality. Someone said, hey, I got some patience for you. You want some? You'd be like, eh, I don't know. Is it on sale? <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Let's, um. Hi, Monica. Oh, yes. I've got my fireplace going, Monica. So I actually have to be careful because I sometimes get too hot. <laughs> But welcome, and I am so glad that you are here. And I'm making a shadow box, Monica, so feel free to ask me any questions. I'm going to keep plugging, uh, plugging along here. I'm just cutting down the adhesive here. And I know this is fiddly work, but this is the reality of how these things get made. I don't like to cut corners when I'm making a project, even if I am on a live video, because I feel like it's false advertising. It gives you a false sense of what really happens when people are crafting. 
and I don't want to be that person. I don't want to make it look like, oh, it's so easy and it takes three seconds to make because that's not how it goes. Not, not in reality anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the bigger piece down here like that. All right, so as you can tell, I covered almost the entire back of that. And now, oh, you're welcome, sweetheart. Yeah, I, you know, I edit my videos. And when I edit my videos, that's one of the things that I feel like I should add as a disclaimer. Like, you know, this video took six minutes, but in reality, the project took me three hours. <laughs> Because sometimes that's the truth of it. And, um, you know, I and I do feel like, oh, I, I hope people are aware of that when they watch my channel and they see these projects. Because oftentimes I will start a project, and I've mentioned this before, I'll start something and walk away and come back to it at, at, at a different time. So that it doesn't feel like I, you know, overwhelming like perhaps doing all of the coloring at once, all of the cutting at once, and it makes it a lot easier that way. All right, so here's the gang. These are the little guys that are gonna go in here. And what I've done is that I purposely stamped and colored this on a piece of paper that I knew would fit in here. So let me show you. I'm just gonna, okay, I've got fuzzies, guys, sorry. I'm just going to start adding this down here and I don't want to get any bumps or anything like that. So I'm just going to start pressing as soon as I have that down here where I know I want it because this is going to be in really close quarters. I think I must have gotten a cat. <laughs> my cat must have been any somewhere around here. I don't allow her into my room and I feel like I have cat hairs in here. Oh goodness. All right. So do you see what I did there? I just kind of used my fingernail to push it in that corner and I'm gonna do the same thing here so that it looks like it's all part of that. There we go. So I just pushed it in there using my fingernail. You could use a tool, but I didn't want a very big gap between those two pieces there. And this is why I want it to be part of that scene like that and you see now it all fits nicely and now I'm going to accessorize them and this is what I did I took my markers and you're gonna think I'm crazy but I drew these out and I colored them <laughs> these are the accessories because I decided that they were on a winter stroll and that they needed something to wear. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do in true style. Let me get rid of this stuff because visually I have, I have problems if I see clutter. Okay, so I have some bits here of this adhesive. And <laughs> thank you, Robin. These are the little details that I like to do. And I, all right. I'm going to go ahead and put some foam tape on the back of that. And that's gonna go on top of this little guy. Because it is a um, shadow box, then I want these to stand out a bit. If it were not, then I probably wouldn't bother. But I want it to have some shadow there. So there's the little hat on top of this little guy. <laughs> feel bad that I covered the back of his head <laughs> but now I'm going to um, do the scarf yeah you know I, I just figured why not have some fun with it you know there aren't any rules and that's what I love about crafting is that whatever spontaneous thought comes into mind just roll with it and at least in my experience, that's when I've had the most fun crafting is when I've just done my own thing. And of course, I get inspired. And like I mentioned before, I was inspired by um, by Anna who sent me that box to just go ahead and make one this week. And I thought, you know what? Let's have a little play, right? 
Okay, so here goes the scarf. And this is extremely tacky, guys, which is why I'm being so careful here. So this is how, oopsie, I'm sorry, I was out of frame there. This is how I designed this, was to go ahead and go right on top of that bunny, like that. And since he's the tallest one, then I made a nice long scarf for him. See that? Isn't that too cute? And now this little mouse here, I decided was a little baby girl, so I made her a lollipop. <laughs> so now the tiniest lollipop in the whole world needs a piece of tape here. So I'm going to see how I can do it. You know what? I think I just found it. Yay. Okay. There it is. So I'm going to have to stick this to the background and hope that it works. I think I need my tweezers here, actually, guys. That's why they make these tools, isn't it? Oopsie. Now, I might... Let's see here. I'm trying to think of how I'm going to put this, because inevitably they stick to your fingers more than they stick to the paper. Here we go. All right. So there's the lollipop that I designed. Let's see if you can see that. See it? Teeny tiny lollipop. And she's going to have that over here. But... I might have to, let's see here. It's gonna be like playing that operation game. <laughs> let's hope I don't get buzzed. Oh, it's gonna be difficult to place it in there. I knew this was gonna happen, but I'm going to, where there's a will, there's a way, and I'm gonna make it work. All right, I'm gonna just push that down. And I'm sorry if you guys can't see what I'm making. I'll show you in just a moment. There it is. Ta-da! I gave her a big old lollipop. Can you guys see that? But there's the scene. And I just thought that that would be fun. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. I just thought that, you know, why not? She's got, or you know, the little mouse has his little hand out. And I thought, hey, let me give him something to play with, right? To tell a story because that's what these things are all about now what I'm going to do is that I have here some edges that I cut out I use my tonic studios designer series dies and I cut these out and just as I did with the other shadow box I'm going to start framing this and I'm trying to think of how I did the other one. Yes, I added the frame here first. Sometimes I forget the steps that I've taken, guys. But this is going to go right on top. Okay. See what happens? <laughs> this is this is this is what happens in a live video. Leave me be. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm going to add this here. And with the other one, I kind of curved it a little bit, but I'm going to see if I can do this without curving it. And I'm trying to remember why I did that, but I, can't, I couldn't give you a reason at this moment. Now, what I do want to be careful with is that because this has a decorative edge, I want to try to fit as many of those scallops within these inner edges just to make it symmetrical. And I hope that makes sense. So... I also want to make sure that this bottom edge here meets this bottom edge here. And that's just be, being meticulous, you know. Um, so I'm just going to apply my adhesive here. And this glue gun, as you can tell, it's been on for a while, so that's a yucky looking color of adhesive. But that just means that my glue gun was burning my glue. Again, things you don't see in uh, edited video, but here it is, right? I'm just drawing, basically drawing with my glue gun. And placing this, as I said before, strategically there. Because I can cut away as much as I want to from the top. But I wanted to make sure that that scallop is covering this here. Okay? Okay. And now I have another one. This is another edge. And I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. I, I love anything tonic, but boy, let me tell you, 
Every now and then they make something that to me is just genius. And this is one of them. And it is, um, it was a designer series die collection, which was exclusive to one particular month. And if you're unfamiliar with Tonic Studios, then that's, you know, that's just something they do. They put out certain dies that are exclusive, and this is one of them. Um, and I say that just so that I don't frustrate you and, uh, and not offering a link. It's just that I can't. It's not, it's not available. So I'm going to layer this here. And if you can tell, there are these little round motifs here. They look like little flowers. I'm going to make sure that these scallops cover those as well. And I'm going to place my adhesive again. At this point, I'm going to place it on the top, not on the bottom, because I don't want anyone to see that glue. I'm going to place it on the top. And of course, we're going to cut away the excess. Now I've got this little scalloped edge. And I'm just going to gently press down like that. Okay. All right. And if it's not 100% straight, I try not to worry too much about that because, you know, what can you do about it? So now I'm going to cut away here, right at the edge, which with the other one, I folded the edge, but in this case, I'm just going to cut away just like that. And no, it's not 100% straight, but like I said, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to do this edge, and I'm left-handed, so I, I don't have any other way to do it but this. <laughs> just try to be better than I am at cutting things straight if you're to make one. So that's what the top looks like now. And, let's see here, I also have this adorable pom-pom trim, okay? And that's what I did with my other one, was that I added this, and because this has now, you see how there's a gap here? Then I'll be able to hide that with the pom-pom trim, but I am going to add a bit more adhesive because it's popping out a bit. And I do want to lay it flat a little bit more. If you see that gap, I'm just I'm going to try that to close that with my adhesive. Exactly. If it's if it's uh, homemade, you can't possibly hold yourself to the standard of a machine <laughs> because then you'll drive yourself nuts. So you do see there though. There's about at least a sixteenth of an inch of difference you know of an edge there and that's why i was saying earlier that if you get something wonky if it's not 100 percent straight just cover it with a piece of uh, lace or ribbon in the end i don't think anyone will care <laughs> um now i'm going to start placing this here you see that? That's going to be my safety there, my little pom-pom trim. So, I'll take a little walk around here, measure it out, if you will. I did get this, uh, I bought this online. I'm going to cut it a tiny bit longer than what I think I need. And the more I look at this, the more I realize it's not pristine. I don't know. But that's okay. I would have preferred it to be absolutely, you know, impeccable, but I don't think that that's going to be the case. <laughs> now, another thing I wanted to mention for this, depending on who you're giving it to, you could totally ink these edges and distress them a whole lot more. I'm just going for a very monochromatic look, which is why I'm leaving that white, but I am going to bling it out. I'm going to do my, my Nouveau drop thing as I usually do also. So I'm going to grab my glue gun, and I have to reach away because I have it plugged in at the other end of my desk here. But I'm going to gingerly, very gingerly, start 
placing this edge here, and I hope you guys can see this. Okay, because my aim is to have that edge right there. Okay, now if you get too much, fingernails are always wonderful. If you don't have fingernails that you can destroy, <laughs> use a metal tip tool and just start, you know, kind of scooping it away, if you will. And that'll give you a cleaner look. So I'm just going to keep doing this. And as you can tell, my glue gun is not very generous with me. And this is just this particular glue gun is like that. So I might have to go back and place a little more glue. And I think I will. I have another glue gun that is by made by the same manufacturer and it is not cordless. And I have to tell you, I might have to go back to that one because this one leaves me stranded here and there, no pun intended. <laughs> but I'm gonna wait for that to heat up for one second. And while that is heating up, let me just show you the next element that I have here to add. As you can see here, are these pieces. These are from Rene Bouquets. And I was thinking of adding them um, possibly up here to give it more height. Um, it'll be very, very delicate. But I was thinking of adding that there. And maybe down here. And of course, I'll be heat embossing it. So I can add that one even as low as that. But I thought that would give it a special touch. And I also have this little star. It's also from Rene Bouquets. So I was thinking of adding that on top. Maybe. See, I'm not quite sure yet. Because I have these snowflakes that I had cut out. And I was thinking of using this also to decorate. So I have to make up my mind. I might layer these behind the star. I could make a little, I guess like a little scene here. We'll see, we'll, we'll figure it out. But I'm going to reach again for this glue. Say a prayer for me that it works. Okay, now it's much hotter. When it's hotter, it works out much better. And this is just something you have to be patient with again. <laughs> Buying some patience on sale. Oh gosh. I'm just gonna press down, make sure that that's right at that border. And I'm gonna go along the edge here. Covering this where I need it. And the other good thing about this is that you can train it to go where you need it. It doesn't have to be in the same, um, how do I explain that? On the very same edge all the way around. So are you guys all ready for Christmas? Are you celebrating with, um, by gift giving or anything like that? Are you guys making gifts? I'm not sure who's still here with me, but. Okay, got that little bit done. I'm sorry that this is so slow, guys, so. Appreciate your patience. But I'm not about to burn myself either. <laughs> if you've ever worked with hot glue, you know you, you cannot ever be confident with it because that's the moment you singe off your fingertips. But you see what I'm doing there, right? I'm going to keep going here. Hopefully not lose momentum. Like that, and I'm gonna have a lot of these strings for a moment, but it's best to wait until you're done to start removing those. And 
It's getting thin again on me. You made some and bought others. Same here, Robin. I just find that, um, so the majority of my family is overseas. So I, uh, I don't trust, <laughs> don't trust the shipping with the handmade goods because nine times out of 10, you know, they, the, the way they handle those packages is not nice. And I hate to put the work into it and then find out that it got completely destroyed um, in, in shipment. But something like this, if you're, you know, if it's not going with a lot of other things, if you bubble wrap it real well, it should be fine. Okay. And you could even put the, um, in the dollar store here in the U.S. at least, they sell those little tongue depressors that kids do craft with, crafts with, I said that wrong. Uh, they sell those at the dollar store. If you really wanted to make this sturdy, I suppose you could even put those on the inside before folding the paper because you can cut those down and that would give you some support. Almost done here. Almost done, and we can celebrate. Okay, so I put my little glob there, and it joins at the corner. And now I will cut away the excess, just like so. Ta da! Okay, yay, we can put away this for now. And I think so far, so good. I love baby blue. It's one of my favorite colors. So, or teal blue, that whole combination. Now, let's see here. Another thing that I have is the embossing powder here with um, called Snowflake Tinsel. I thought to use that, or I can use this one, which is... Uh, pearl luster and this one ends up looking more white on white thank you robin so i have to evaluate here which one to use and i'm kind kind of uh tempted to use this one just because it's got that whole snowy scene and i have a coffee filter here but i also have some other colors that i had used previously so i think i should probably grab a new one Yep, I have a new one. This one, none of them are exactly 100% clean. <laughs> but I reuse these. Okay. So let's ink up the pieces here. And I will heat emboss these and then add them to our frame. I am going to use some Versamark ink. But I think I'm also going to use some Broken China just on the edges of these pieces here because I would like to give this a bit of dimension. Let me see which... I never label the little coloring pads and then I regret it. I think it might be this color. We'll go with this one. Okay. So I'm just going to go around the edges with this. And this is the wonderful thing about Beautiful Board, and again, this is from Renee Bouquet's, is that you don't have to leave it, you can leave it as is, no, no shame in that, but you can also play around with it, distress it a little bit. You can ink the whole thing, you can use whatever color you want, whatever medium you want, really, because this is a, a wood compressed paper product or wood product. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to be embossing on top of this with a color that is essentially white. So it's not going to be too dark for this project. And this is an oxide, so it'll remain nice and bright. So I'm done inking that. And I don't think I'm going to ink the star because this is going to layer on top. 
So I'm going to use the Versamark for that. If you're not familiar with Versamark, this is just a transparent ink for embossing purposes. Or for watermarks, mine is a little bit stained because I used it with a different project. So I just stamp it on a different piece of paper until I get enough clear ink there. And this might take a minute. I appreciate your patience. <laughs> I just don't want to get pink. Although if I do get any pink on that, it's not going to be the end of the world because I keep forgetting my paper has pink in it. So let's just run with it. I'm just going to smush this. And I can re-ink this also. But there we go. It doesn't look like I'm doing anything, but there's quite a quite a bit of ink on this. There's that one. Now I'm going to do my little star here. And all of these are going to be very glimmery in the end. So there's that. Okay. Cover that up. I'm going to add my embossing powder and I apologize for the glare that you see there on my table I just I am indoors and I need that light in order to see so let me just cover all of that up you can be generous with it because it's all going to fall into this coffee filter anyway I'm trying to get the edges there get it all covered up And I think this will be nice. I mean, maybe the glitter was a bit much, but this is paints and glitter. <laughs> Not to be snarky or anything, but okay. I'm going to remove these and put away this powder so that it doesn't fly all over my home. Let's put this back. There's so much of that. So if you get this from Ranger, let me just tell you, that's a lot. This is a huge bottle. It's not quite an ounce, but there's, I think there's sufficient there to do quite a few projects. Okay, so let's heat this up. We all love the transformation of embossing powder. As we say, we never get told. So you're going to see this, and it's going to go from a matte white to a textured white with that little bit of uh, glitter in there. Okay. Put that one down, move on to the next one. Do this one. Sorry, it wasn't in frame.
Okay. I think that's about right. Sorry, Robin. These are called beautiful board pieces. Beautiful board from Renee Bouquets. And I should have had this paper here so you guys can see. But these beautiful board pieces, let me show you. They're about the thickness of a nickel. Okay. So you see that? And they come in this nude color, but as you can tell, you can ink them, you can emboss them, you can do whatever you like with them. And they're more like a particle board, I would say. They're not as strong as wood, um, but they're, they're a chipboard. It's really what it's called is a chipboard piece. So there they are. And I like the fact that some of it has more blue, some of it is more nude. I, I love that kind of distressed look where it's not all the same. It's not, you know, entirely covered. Let me put that away. And now I'm just going to wipe off this powder really quickly here because it's not, it'll be a situation going to use my uh, piece of paper towel here and the great thing about this mat is that it takes two seconds to wipe it down too and get all that powder off of there there we go all right done with that okay so now I can start adding this on top now, I'm not going to worry too much about this back because I am going to cover it with this uh, snowflake paper also. I like to have a nice finished piece. Thank you so much. And I'm going to now select the one that will go on top here. And let me zoom out. And I'm sorry. I have to. Here we go. I'm going to place this one up here. Give it a proper framed look. And it's going to be very, very delicate, but all I'm going to do is place adhesive strategically here on the edges on two little spots, actually four. And again, all those little strings that are looking like cobwebs will be removed. I'm just going to place this and I'm eyeballing this, but if you're not confident with that, you could always... Uh, use a pencil to mark your aim, you know, where you're aiming with this. Okay. Now there is going to be a slight gap there between this piece and the edge, if you can see that, but that's okay. The, uh, the hot glue is transparent and I don't think that that will look tacky. So there's going to be so much more going on that I don't think that that's going to be an issue. So there's the top. I'm loving this already. And now the bottom will be here. And that's going to go right there. Now here I can be a little bit more generous, but I'm also aiming toward the bottom. And maybe a little bit on the sides, just at the bottom there also. I'm going to try to center this here as well. Okay. Now, you see how that just makes it look a little more dressed up? Okay, and again, I'm so sorry about that glare. There you go. There's that. Now I want to place my little star, but I think I want to place it down here so that you still see that top portion. I think that's where I want that. And I, I like that this has some solid parts to it because it's going to allow me to do that. And I could also back that up with vellum if I wanted to, if I wanted to add some color to that. And since I've mentioned it, you know what's going to happen. Because I'm totally going to do that. And I always have spare pieces of vellum laying around my table. So because I thought of it, it's got to happen. <laughs> I'm just going to adhere this to this piece of vellum. 
And this is the other great thing about these pieces is that you don't need a special glue. Just any uh, crafting glue will be sufficient to use the uh, beautiful board pieces. So, actually I forgot one step. What I want to do here is color this first. And I'm going to use, I think this color. Let me swatch it out real quick. Nope, that's too green. I think I know exactly the color I want to use. This is called Skylight Blue by Tonic Studios. I'm just going to do this, and I know that it's barely visible, but I want that on there. And now I'm going to place my star on top. I guess I could do it down here. There we go. Let's press it down a little bit. And now I'm going to cut around it. Okay. I like to do this with these pieces. And you'll see why. There is a method to my madness. I'm not completely mad. <laughs> like the Cheshire Cat says, we're all mad here. But there is a method to my madness. You'll see. You'll see why I went through the trouble of doing that. Okay, so once I've got a basic shape there, I actually like using my knife here. And I feel like a spoiled brat. But this does make life a whole lot easier. And that's why I invested in these tools, so I may as well use them. Just going around with my craft knife, removing the excess. And this is nice and glued already, so I don't have to worry too much. Going like that. A little bit more. Okay, I think these are the little extra steps that just, you know, take your craft to another level. Adding little details here and there. Dimension, layering, shine. I kind of like to combine all of it at once. <laughs> oh gosh, all right. So here's the result of that. It just gave it a little bit of a background there. And here's what's going to happen is it'll give it a more matte look, which is a nice contrast against the shimmer of that glitter. And I am going to place that here. I am debating, however, whether or not I want to add a blue snowflake behind it. I think I should. But I'm not, well, I don't know, maybe it needed to be bigger. Let me see here. I have a silver one. Maybe the silver one. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the silver one there. Thank you, Monica. Thank you so much. I think I'm going to go with the silver one. Although it, you're not seeing much of it. Let's see here. I'm not sure if I should have made all the snowflakes the same, although I'm not particularly a big fan of that. I, I guess it depends. I think I'm going to do a trio. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I'm going to do a trio here. Let me show you in just a moment. Okay. So I'm going to place this snowflake first. It's going to be kind of home base, if you will. And I realize the pom-pom trim is going to make this very dimensional, but that's okay. If you see how much glue I placed on there, that's quite a big dollop. And that's to help me elevate this snowflake because it'll be as if I placed a dimensional adhesive uh, thanks to the silicone in that glue. In fact, I could have just done that. 
Then I'm going to do the same here. Nice big dollop there. And that's going to layer here. All right. Now what I don't want is any kind of yellowing there. So I'm going to be careful about that because we all know hot glue will do that. So, okay, this is going to be my third, wait, this one, this blue one will be the third one over here. My little trifecta. Okay. And now on top of that trio is where I'm going to place my snowflake or my star. What am I saying? My star. And only applying adhesive in the center. Yes, hot glue is no one's friend. Don't let me fool you. <laughs> it is no one's friend. <laughs> it is loyal to no one. But there's my little... A uh, trio of sunflakes. No, snowflakes. Why can't I get that word out? Uh, snowflakes and star. <laughs> oh my gosh. I said sunflakes, didn't I? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So, on top of that, once that dries, we can go crazy adding a few more things. <laughs> and down here. I could continue on with the sunflakes. No, just kidding. The snowflakes. I could do another trio here. Let me just take a look and see how that's going to look. At the bottom there. Because I have these pearls. These are mermaid pearls from Renee Bouquets. And they have this gorgeous blue tonality to it and purple and pink. Aren't they adorable? So I got to thinking that this would be really cute to place on here also with the blue portion of it kind of popping out. So I think that should be it. I'm going to go ahead and place these here. And, and I also do the hot glue just for the sake of um, making it stick immediately. Whereas if I'm just crafting by myself, I'll have a bit more, you know, time for things to dry and all that. Now, I want to make sure that this doesn't cover up my, too much of this. But I'm, again, I'm doing the same thing. I guess it's best to apply as little as possible. And of course these are hollow in the center, so. Um, uh, no, I shouldn't have done that. Well, too late now. There we go. All right, there's that snowflake. And now I'm going to place my little pearl there in the center. And if you twirl it in a circle, I don't know if you just saw that. If you twirl it in a circle, you're, um, you'll get it to kind of disconnect a little bit easier. Although this, this is not the best uh, glue either. Okay, so now I'm going to place that pearl, as I mentioned before, with that blue portion facing up. I'm just going to press down on that for a second. Just like that. And it adds some dimension. I think something fell in there. <laughs> it adds some dimension, but I really like it. It gives you one more little element there to look at. I'm super happy with the results so far. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I have this twine here, which here's what I've done. I've got this piece of wire I'm going to take a quick sip, guys. Thank you, Monica. Sorry, I, I get so thirsty. Okay, 
this is one of those wires that comes off of the edge of uh, the uh, wired ribbon. And I've just folded it in half because I have the hardest time finding needles that work and I break everything. <laughs> so thank you for the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I see that there are four people here. So if I can get four thumbs up, that would be awesome. Um, so let's just grab a little bit of this. And what we're going to do is grab some little bells. And these are also from Renee Bouquet's. She sells them in little packs and they are the most adorable little jingle bells ever. So I'm going to grab three of those because working in threes is just a good number for any design element. I'm going to try to cover this, guys. So, oh, I need someone to give me like a buzzer anytime I have glare on my videos. And I am very sorry that I don't have another option. But I'm doing the six millimeter eight millimeter okay they are different sizes so small large and then small again okay and this is just a design element and i'll give you a little secret this is called triangulating and i've discussed this before in my videos triangulating can be done in more than one way when you're designing something and it is you know working in threes working in graduated sizes so i am pulling now do you see that i'm pulling those onto the string now okay and this is going to help me a bit instead of fighting with that string and now i can take away my little wire and this was a macgyver move i did on one of my other videos i forgot who it was that was telling me just use a wire and because i couldn't find my needle and this thing has stuck with me. Okay, now I'm just going to pull on one side of that. Not both, just one. To get these guys to come through. Boom, just like that. Okay. And these are going to stand out because they're gold. I don't have them in silver, but I'm not going to worry about that. Because I think what I'm going to do... Let's see here, is make a bow. First, I'm going to make a knot. And I'm giving myself a lot of excess here, and I realize that, but that's just to, you know, work comfortably with it. Okay, so I made a little knot, and now I'm going to attempt to make a bow. There's one, like so. And I like to make it nice and tight and then pull down on it to make it as small as I need it. Holding on to the little bells. Okay. So if my, I like, I call these little, little Mickey Mouse ears. If my little Mickey Mouse ears are pleasant looking, then I'll go with that. Okay. I'm just try to make them both the same size. And that's going to adhere right in the center of that little star. I like it. I like it a lot. Now you could color, just to let you know, in fact, I forgot about that. You can paint the bells with chalk paint. That's what I meant to do. <laughs> I have some chalk paint. I forgot, guys. Um, let's see here. And because this is going to be kind of distressed looking... I'm just going to lightly paint these with the chalk paint, which happens to be, oh goodness, I think I got this, I don't even remember, but this is Americana Decor in, what color is this? I don't know guys, but it's kind of like a bluish teal, I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of that, remove most of it. And you can also do this with gesso if you don't have chalk paint. And I'm just going to distress these a little bit. Okay. Which to some people that's, you know, a bit much. But for me, I, I want this look. And yes, you'll be able to see a little bit of the gold still. But I could make them completely matte. So if you'd like to remove the shine from bells and that sort of thing, just use some chalk paint. 
Okay. Just like that. And it, do, it won't matter if it gets on anything else because you're just making that kind of look distressed. In fact, I might just, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to play with that chalk paint a little bit more too. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to adhere those right in the center there. And I'm going to do this on the side just to make sure I'm not getting some yellow adhesive on that. Because that glue gun seems to like to burn my glue. Okay, now I'm placing this in the center and I'm just going to press down a little bit. Get those guys looking proper. And now I'm going to hit it up a little bit more with this chalk paint. Again. And if you see the result there, it looks like it was meant to be. Okay. So I hope my lighting is okay. You guys tell me. Maybe this is better. Because what I can do now is grab a little bit more of that paint and go kind of like around the edges here. Just play around with it a little bit. Now I realize this is adding a little bit of green to my project because it's more like a teal color. But I'm okay with that. It adds some interest on the edges here. Just make it look, you know, distressed. Just like that. And then I'm going to use a little bit more up here. And I know that I had used distress ink, but this is another option. Okay. To use that. And maybe a tiny bit more. And you see that I'm adding barely there. Very little. But a tiny bit more here and there. Just to give it contrast. And I'm going to cut those tails. I'm not going to leave them so long. But see that? It gives it a little bit more contrast there. Thank you guys. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> I hope that it helps kind of de-stress you because I'm I'm getting that feeling as I'm making it is it helps me just feel so um, peaceful when I make these kinds of projects. So I hope that that's what you feel also. And those little tails didn't need to be very long so I'm just going to cut them here so that they kind of reach the edge here. Because when you, when you look at this border, if you see that, then it's going to draw your eye kind of toward the center there also. So there's that. And if you can believe it, I'm not done yet. <laughs> She's not done yet. But, oh, by the way, the, num the name of this paint is called Refreshing. Look at that refrescante so that's the the name and it's americana decor chalky finish you know de from deco art so this brand name is where, how you can find this kind of paint if you're looking for it i don't recall where i got it but there's a there's a possibility i may have gotten it at tuesday morning or one of those places now i'm, going, I'm trying to unclog this because i need it I am going to use from um, Tonic Studios Nuvo. I have these diamond sequins and look, they're holographic kind of see-through. So I want to use a few of those and I'm going to use my tweezers. I don't know if you've seen these, but I think they're hysterical. Look at that. <laughs> I'm going to call those my Christmas tweezers. So I'm going to use my Christmas tweezers. And I'm going to strategically place some of those around here because that's what I wanted to do. That's I was thinking of that when I was designing this paper was how cute it would look with little sequins here and there. Um, like that, okay. So let's take some out. 
like that. And then in the center of the sequins, you can place Nouveau drops if you want. Because why would sequins be left alone? <laughs> And I'm going to zoom in, guys, because I keep forgetting that you guys need to see what I'm doing. Please let me know if that's a good visual. And I, I thank you so much for your feedback. I'm so happy that other people enjoy what I like, too. It really makes me happy. Because then I don't feel so crazy. <laughs> All right, there's this one. And I'm going to take a peek at something really quickly because I don't know if my fireplace just went out. Nope. It's in full force. Full force, that fireplace. Okay. Um, There was one here. I did not forget. And one over here. This is going to be so, so twinkly. I'm loving it. Super twinkly project. I should call it Twinkle Twinkle. <laughs> oh, gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, I'm also going to use some little gems. So let me take aside the Nouveau sequins. And I'm going to use these little gems here. They're kind of like Swarovski crystals. I love using these also. And these are going to be placed right here where you see the circles there. I'm just going to place those there and up here also. I hope you can see that. So up here, one, two, and then maybe even, let's see here. Yeah, why not at the connection there like that. And then I'm going to place them down here where you saw me place the adhesive there and there. Um, sorry guys, my, my glue gun just made a sound and I, I don't know if that thing is on its way out, but I don't know that I trust it. <laughs> I might have to switch back to my old one because it's scaring me and that's relatively new. But it's literally bubbling. I can hear it bubbling. Have you guys ever had that experience? Please tell me. Because if, if not, I'm afraid that thing's going to blow up. <laughs> and I'm a chicken when it comes to that sort of thing. Especially if I'm home alone. I'm like, oh my gosh. Please don't blow up. All right. There's this one. I can hear it bubbling, guys. I'm not even joking you on that. It's like talking to me. <laughs> One more gem here. I hope it doesn't look like I'm bedazzling my project. <laughs> but I might have residual issues from the 80s. All right. Anyway, there's that. Let me zoom out again. It's very subtle compared to everything else, I suppose. But there's more shine. And... Put away the rest of these because I don't think I need any more. Um, I suppose I could put one on the lollipop, but that might be a bit much. Then there was something else that I was going to do. What was it? Glitter. No, Nouveau drops. Because I've already added sequins and embossing and all the rest. So let's do some Nouveau drops. And I think we can call this done because I can do the back of it. Maybe I should do that first, because if I do Nouveau Drops, that's, that's got to be the last step, and that's kind of, you know, that's how it goes. Anytime you use Nouveau Drops, can't go back from that. I'm going to try to get this paint off of here quickly, because I don't want that to ruin my project. Okay. Let's do the background. Now, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but this measures 6 by four and a half, which is different, a different size than the, um, 
Thank you guys. Thank you so much. This is a different size than the one that, um, let me see something here. I'm trying to see if these are the same size. No, they're not. So I don't know if you can see the subtle difference there. Let me zoom out. These are different sizes. And what happened was that I got to thinking this is made with a nine by 10 piece of paper. And then this was an eight and a half by 10 piece of paper because I was thinking that I didn't want to have to worry about the size of my paper. Um, what was it? I think I used a 12 by 12. Yes, a I needed a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock to make the base of this. And I thought, okay, I need to be able to figure this out with an eight and a half by 11 so that I don't have to stress. I can just go ahead and grab whatever piece of paper. And this is 110 pound cardstock, which I do buy in the eight and a half by 11 size. So what I figured out was, hi, Evelyn. Oh, no worries, sweetie. <laughs> Thank you for chatting. Yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that I could use that size paper. So here's what I did. I cut it down to it's eight and a half by 10 and then scored on all four sides at every half an inch starting at half an inch and ending at two inches and so that's how i was able to do this size but as i said before anna has a tutorial on how to actually do the scoring and all of that but if you have any questions I, i'll be more than happy to share that okay um so let's cover the back and i'm just going to do tick marks here i'm not going to do anything exciting with that and where's my pencil? I don't know what I did with my pencil. I must have taken it somewhere. This is the joke. The inside joke is that Raquel's got a studio full of pens and, and markers and paints and this and that, but she can never find a pencil when she needs it. All right, there's this. Okay, let me cut this down. So Evelyn, we just made this little shadow box together. And now I'm going to cover the back. I'm just going to cut it down using this paper here. And I was going to also use a piece of chipboard, guys. I almost forgot. To make it sturdy like the other one. So let me take a look here. I don't think I'm going to find it in my scraps. <laughs> here we go. You know when you're doing a video you can never find anything but this one might be, well, yeah let's cut it this way. I'm going to glue this down first and then adhere it onto the back of that. So I'm kind of working backwards here, but I think it'll make sense. I'm going to use this, um, what is this called, ATG gun to adhere this because I really like the way that this type of adhesive works on um, craft medium, uh, what do you call this, chipboard? It works really great on chipboard. Okay, I now figured out why I have cat hairs on my uh, surface here. I had picked up my cat and hugged her, and she's a long-haired cat, and her hair transferred onto my shirt. So every time I lean in on this table, I'm getting cat hair on my table. So it's my own fault. <laughs> and you guys probably really needed to know that. <laughs> so... As I said before, I designed this with all the inking done on the edges for you. So if you do pick this up, you're not going to have to worry about that. It'll be nice and finished for you. I'm just going to line this up here. Woohoo! Before it falls. Oh, too late. It's stuck. Oh well. Tiny bit crooked there, but nothing I can do about it now. Okay, 
and cut away what I don't need. I'm going to use my ruler so I don't ruin it. And now you can choose to do this with your guillotine cutter. I don't recommend it because it's easier to replace this kind of blade than it is to replace the paper cutter. So I don't like to use my paper cutters for uh, chipboard unless it's my cutter pillar and I'm just not feeling like taking that out right now. And this one's by Cricut, if you're unfamiliar with this, and it's very nice, very sharp, as you can tell. Okay. Now I place chipboard on this because I'm not going to go through all this trouble and then just have this be flimsy. So I'm placing that on the back. And in fact, you could place two, three layers, however many you want. I think this is going to be sufficient. And it's just slightly smaller than the back. But it's just for support. I'm just cleaning off those edges there. And you can use a rubber eraser so that you don't get yourself a paper cut, of course. <laughs> yeah, I blame my cat unnecessarily for things. This morning, for instance, I thought she was uh, attacking my Christmas tree. But she wasn't. She was just... Uh, I have it next to a big window, and she was hitting the tree with her tail because she was excited about what she was seeing outside. And I'm, you know, from far away going, hey, are you messing with my tree? <laughs> Leave my tree alone. But she was being good. She, she didn't do anything wrong. She was just flinging it. Okay, so I'm going to place this here. Now, this could have been done at the very beginning, of course. I did not have to wait till the end to do this part, but there's more than one way to go about things, right? Just make sure that you have even pressure on there and that you use a good adhesive so that it doesn't let you down. And of course, I should have stamped my stamp there first too, but that's okay. I can always add it. Now, the other thing that I did for the other one, which I'm not going to do in this video because I think it's kind of boring, but um, you can make a stand. And I was going to purchase a file for this, in fact, a digital file. And I, my husband said, oh, you mean like a bow tie? Or, or like a tie, because I, I was explaining to him what I was looking for, and I said, a tie? What is he talking about? It didn't dawn on me that this kind of looked like looks like a men's tie. So just to let you know, the way that I made this was I took a rectangle, and I believe this is two inches wide at the bottom, and then I just measured in so that it would come in a quarter of an inch on each side, and I gave myself a half-inch little flap there. So I just scored the paper after a... After I cut it, see how it goes in a quarter inch? After I cut it, I scored it at half an inch there, and then I placed my adhesive on that, if you can see there. And that's that. That's my little stand. Super easy. And of course I lined it because I wanted it to look clean, but... So I'll go ahead and do that here, but I'm going to, I think... I think I'm going to call this... No, I'm not going to... I forgot the Nouveau Drops. <laughs> I got talking. The Nouveau Drops. So, I'm going to be using this blue. This is called Jewel, uh, Sea Breeze. And it is translucent, so it'll be very subtle. But, let me zoom in again so that you... I'm trying to avoid that glare. I'm going to um, shine up the scarf a little bit, just a tiny bit here and there, I guess on the edges where it's blue. And here's why, I wanted to use these Nouveau drops and then I'm going to use it also on the very little tip here of this hat. 
because this is going to dry with some shine, but I also want to sprinkle it with some glitter glass. It looks like that. And this is going to be the very last touch here. Very last detail. I like to use one of these little spoons. Let me see here if you guys can see. And I'm just going to sprinkle it right on top there. And this is going to look like snow when it dries. I'm kind of taking advantage of the fact that this is a shadow box to so just do it like this. Okay. And it's very little, but you also have to be kind of careful with it because it can, it can be sharp. Um, and then once that dries, I'll clean it out. I'll remove the excess. But I'm also going to do a couple of little drops just up here to follow the scalloped edge here because this is a really beautiful detail on this and I don't want to um, I don't want to just leave it plain which you can because it, it wouldn't look bad but I wouldn't be me if I didn't keep going and I'm trying to make sure I don't hit the snowflakes There's that, that, and that. Last drop. There we go. And voila, we are done. So let me see if I can, I'm going to do this. <laughs> Try not to ruin the Nouveau drops, of course, but there we go. All right, you guys. Thumbs up if you like the project. Let me know what you think. I've had a lot of fun making it, that's for sure. And I didn't know it was going to go in this direction when I started, so I'm really happy about that. In fact, I should probably add some drops or gems to the center of those snowflakes, but if I leave them as such, I think it'll be okay. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you. I'm really happy with it. And I, I have someone in mind to receive it, and I think, uh, I think they'll be pleased. Of course, it's going to be hard to part with, <laughs> just like anything else. Thank you, Robin. I truly appreciate it. I'm going to uh, try to take pictures of it and post it on social media and all that good stuff. Um, because I think it's a great gift idea. I think I missed a little bit, a little spot there. So I, I kind of want to fix that really quick before it dries. But I think I missed a spot with the glitter. So I'm just going to do it by hand right there. I am a stickler for that. It's like, come on, girl, get it right. There, I think I'm happier with that. It's very subtle, but the other thing is, to try, of course, not to ruin the... I, I inevitably stick my fingers in the Nouveau drops, guys. Don't think that I'm ever perfect, so... <laughs> already ruined one drop. <laughs> but yeah, feel free to share this video if you like. Um, oh, <laughs> thank you, Monica. I know, right? I have, to be, I have to be complacent with the picture of my favorite projects, and this is hands down... One of my favorites. I might have to make another one just for me. <laughs> Although I can't because I don't have any more of these pieces. I would have to order them. Um, but, you know, I I like to commemorate certain events. You know, especially if it's a one-in-a-lifetime type of thing. And I think this is a good way to go about it. So, yeah, if you need gift ideas, something handmade I think is... Um, really special because no no one else will ever receive the same you know you can't replicate these things even I couldn't if I tried give me the same materials same markers I'm never going to be able to do the same thing twice um so I think that there's some value in that but having said that I have kept you guys here very long <laughs> I would appreciate 
at least five thumbs up because I see that there's six people here and I think one of them is me. Um, but if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to share it. If not, if you make something similar, tag me on social media. Just use the um, hashtag uh, paints and glitter and that way I can search for it and I can find it and all that good stuff because I love to see what other people do also. And I'll try to share this on the um, Colorado Craft Company um, Facebook page. I, I try to join them today, although I have total issues with Facebook. So if I don't do that, I'll just tag them on um, Instagram. So if you like that company, then you can, you know, use their hashtag to find their things. And hopefully this will show up as um, having been tagged there. But yeah. Any questions before I go? And of course, any Nouveau products will be linked in my link tree. So if you're interested in any of that, if you're doing any Christmas shopping, I would appreciate it if you use my tonic links. I'm linked uh, with Tonic Studios directly and Craft Stash. So you can find Nouveau products there that I have used today as well as uh, Ranger products and all that good stuff. So I don't see any questions, but you know, you can reach me at paintsandglitter. I'm sorry, at gmail.com if you do have any, but I do appreciate your time today. I hope that you can be an inspired and be blessed, and I thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Ciao, ciao. Bye.